HubSpot is a powerful and dynamic CRM platform that we talk a lot about on this channel due to its suitability for small businesses. However, all the time I get asked how to actually integrate and implement the CRM into a small business just getting started with HubSpot. So the focus for this video is the initial setup of HubSpot CRM for your small business. Hey guys, Stuart here, welcome along to this channel. I hope you're all having a productive week. Now, like I mentioned, this HubSpot tutorial is all about showing you how to set up and implement the HubSpot CRM into your business so that you can better manage and streamline your day-to-day -day operations, contacts, leads, sales process, and more, all within HubSpot. Okay, so before we go ahead and launch into this HubSpot implementation tutorial, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already or if you're new to this channel and that way you'll stay updated with actionable videos and tutorials designed to equip you with the skills, knowledge and tools to help your small business thrive online. And with that happy note out of the way, let's go ahead and set up your small business with HubSpot. <music> Okay, so let's go ahead and get started and integrate the HubSpot CRM with your small business. We're going to go ahead and get started with a free account. To do that, simply head over to your browser and type in hubspot.com and go ahead and sign up for free or simply click the link in our description below this video and that's also going to take you here. Now, it's important to note that the link in our description is an affiliate link, which means if you decide to upgrade to any of the paid hub plans, then we will get a small commission. So thank you in advance if you decide to use that link. Then once you arrive here, simply go ahead and click on get started for free. And remember the focus for today's tutorial is the initial integration of the HubSpot CRM with your small business. So go ahead and add your personal details here or simply navigate up here and sign up with Google. I'm going to go ahead and sign up with Google and select my business Gmail account. Then go ahead and select the industry that you're in. If this is not correct based on the suggestion, then simply come down and click on search all industries. I'm going to go ahead and select marketing and advertising because this is the industry that we operate in. Go ahead and add your job role in your business. I'm going to come down and select director and then click next. Go ahead and add the name of your company, then navigate down and click on next. How many people work in your company? I'm going to go ahead and click on two to five add your company's website domain. As you can see, HubSpot's gone ahead and suggested the domain based on the business email that we entered at the beginning. Now, if you currently do not have a professional domain name for your business, then what I'll do is add a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description that will guide you through the process of how to choose the best domain name for your business. Now, if you currently do not have a website for your business, then what you can actually do is create a comprehensive website directly inside HubSpot completely for free. And I'll talk more about this later on in this tutorial. Okay, so once you've added your domain name, come down and click on next. Then go ahead and select the location that's closest to where your business operates. This is where your data will be hosted. I'm going to keep US selected and then come down and click create account. Give HubSpot a moment to create and load your account, then go ahead and select the best option for you. Which part of the CRM platform do you want to explore first? I'm going to go ahead and click on sales for now. And congratulations, it's as simple as that to create your free HubSpot account. Now what we want to do is complete the initial integration of HubSpot into our business. To do that, simply navigate up to the top right hand corner and locate settings. And this is where we want to make sure that everything is set up and configured correctly within our HubSpot account. Now, first, you'll be taken to general and under general, we want to make sure that our profile is set up correctly. So down here, we have our personal profile. We have our first name, last name, language. Then we have the date, time and number format. I'm happy with this. Then if we navigate down further, we have our phone number. Go ahead and add your business phone number in here. Then once you've added your phone number, navigate down to the default homepage. This is your default homepage that you'll see when you arrive inside your HubSpot account. I'm going to click here and I want to click on activity feed because as soon as I land on my HubSpot dashboard, I want to see all the different activities, tasks that are important to me that have been happening within HubSpot. Then navigate down and click on save. 
then navigate back up to the top of the page and click on email. Remember, under general, this is the information that is relevant to our personal profile within HubSpot. So down here under email, what we want to do is go ahead and connect our personal email. So what I'm going to do is connect my business email because I want to be able to log, track, send and receive emails within the HubSpot CRM. This means I don't need to use multiple apps to communicate with my contacts. For example, I use Gmail for business and therefore what I can do is go ahead and connect my Gmail account, my business Gmail account, and I can communicate via email directly inside HubSpot. I can send and schedule emails from HubSpot, log email replies to HubSpot automatically, suggest follow up tasks and capture contact details from your email. So again, this is where you want to integrate your email with HubSpot. To do that, simply navigate up to connect personal email, then come down and go ahead and click on turn on inbox automation. This is going to allow for a seamless integration with your email and HubSpot. Then come down and click on connect your inbox. Add your email address up here, then come down and click on next. And as you can see, our email is hosted by Gmail. So I'm going to navigate down and connect to Gmail and then click on continue. Here I just need to sign into my Gmail account and then navigate down and click on allow. Give HubSpot a moment to verify the connection. Then here we have the option to download the extension for Gmail and Outlook. This basically allows you to access your CRM related tools and features directly inside your inbox. We're going to leave that for now and click on no thanks. And then as you can see, if we navigate down here, our email is currently connected. We can always turn off inbox automation and we can always remove this email if we like. And over here, when you have the time, go ahead and install the extension. Then come down and click on include unsubscribe link. This is going to allow you to stay compliant with local spam laws. Then if we navigate up to add email alias, you can go ahead and add email aliases if you like. Then down here, we can edit our email signature. Take the time to do this as this is going to add a level of professionalism on your emails. Now, if we navigate back up to the top and before we navigate over to calling, if you currently do not have a business email and maybe you're thinking of setting up a professional business email with Gmail using Google Workspace, then what I'll do is add a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description that will guide you through the process of the initial setup of your business emails with Google Workspace. Okay, so back on general, what we're going to do is save changes and then navigate up to calling. This is where you can set up HubSpot calling. You can use HubSpot calling to streamline your communication and keep all your conversations in one place. Unfortunately, this feature is not available on the free plan. So what we're going to do is navigate over to calendar. And this is where it's important to connect our calendar with HubSpot's CRM. This is going to allow you to seamlessly keep track with all your different activities in relation to your HubSpot CRM. We're going to navigate down and click on connect your account. Again, I use Gmail, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Google and then connect your account. Then click on accept and connect to Google. And as you can see, we have our calendar connected with HubSpot's free plan. You can only connect one calendar. Now what we're going to do is navigate down to meetings and within HubSpot's free CRM, you can create a meeting landing page, which allows you to streamline the process of setting up meetings. And as you can see, this is our meeting link here. Unfortunately, we cannot edit this link. And this is our meeting URL down here that we can send to our contacts in order to arrange a meeting. Navigate down to meeting domain, click here, and we're going to go ahead and use this default meeting URL for now. And then navigate down and click on save. What we're going to do is navigate back up to the top and then click on tasks. Here you can choose your personal preferences for your account in terms of tasks. Again, this is just the default information. You can change all these details when you create individual tasks. However, when you create a new task, this is going to be the default information. So I'm happy with that for now. Okay, so now that we've covered general, what we want to do is navigate over to your preferences and click on notifications. And this is where you can set up your personal preferences in relation to notifications coming from HubSpot. Here under email, we can keep email notifications sent to our inbox enabled, or we can disable this feature. Here we can navigate down further and we can see what you'll get notified about. And you can expand each of these different preferences. For example, if I navigate down to, let's say deals and click here, I can get notified when a deal is assigned to me, a deal stage is updated, or you're mentioned on a deal record. 
So again, these are all personal preferences and you can go through each of these different features or items within HubSpot and manage the type of notifications that you receive. Again, this is all based on your own personal preferences, so we're gonna leave that for now. However, again, take the time to go through those items and add your own personal preferences. Then navigate up to desktop, and here you can choose the type of notifications that you receive on desktop. Again, take the time to go through these preferences. Then next to desktop, we have other apps. And again, this is all about other apps that you connect with HubSpot and the type of notifications that you'll receive. And again, next to other apps, we have mobile apps. And again, this is where you can manage the notifications that you'll receive through the HubSpot mobile app. Now, if you wanna learn more about the HubSpot mobile app, how to get started and how to navigate through this app and use the app for your CRM related activities, then what I'll do is add a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description that will guide you through how to make the most of the HubSpot mobile app. Okay, so under notifications, what we're going to do is navigate over to security and to enhance the security of your account, what you want to do is navigate down to two-factor authentication and set up this feature. Once enabled, you'll be required to give two types of identification when you log into HubSpot. So again, go ahead and take the time to set up two-factor authentication. Okay, so now that we've completed your preferences, so these are all the preferences in related to your account. What we want to do now is navigate down to account setup and this is in relation to your organization and how your business works with hubspot so what we're going to do is navigate down to account defaults and under general what we want to do is make sure that our company information our account information for our company is correct so go ahead and add in all those details once you've done that, navigate over to security. Ideally, what you want to do is come down and require two-factor authentication for your entire team. This is going to protect the security of your HubSpot CRM at an account level. Then once you've done this, come down to account access. We want to allow HubSpot employees to access our account for support and assistance. However, if you have different security preferences, what you can do is you can not allow disable this and not allow HubSpot employees to access your account. We're going to keep this enabled and then navigate over to branding. Then here we can set up our branding for our HubSpot account. So to do that, simply navigate over to my brand kits and click on create a new brand kit. Add your brand name. We're going to go ahead and add our business name and then click on save. Come down and click on the asset that you just created and then navigate down and add your logo. I'm going to go ahead and add our business logo, the logo name, logo alt text. And then I'm going to navigate over to browse images and upload our logo. And here's the logo that I want to upload and I'm happy with that. I can also navigate down and I can add a favicon if I like. So I'm going to quickly do that and then navigate over to browse images. And here's the favicon that I want to use and I'm going to navigate over to save. Then navigate over to colors and here you can add your primary brand colors if you like or you can import colors from a URL. And down here we can start using one theme across our brand. You can go ahead and click on set theme to choose a theme from the marketplace. We're going to leave that for now and navigate over to user defaults. Again here are user defaults. I'm happy with all this information here. Then navigate over to currency and this is your account currency. Again I'm happy with US dollar. Okay so what we're going to do is navigate over to account setup again and click on users and teams. This is where we want to add our team members to our CRM. You can also create teams for specific access to different features. However, this is only available if you upgrade to a paid plan. So for now, we're going to navigate over to users and go ahead and add a new user by clicking create user. I'm going to add the email address of a team member and I just want to add this user for now. However, you can also come down and create multiple users at the same time by uploading a CSV file. We're gonna come down and click on next and you can navigate through all of these different features within your HubSpot CRM. For example, the CRM activities, marketing, sales, service, reports, account, and you can manage the access of each of these different features. So for example, if I click on CRM tools and click here, I can navigate down and I can allow this user to bulk delete, import, export, edit property settings and more down here. So again, this is based on your organization, your personal preference in terms of the permission level that your employees have or that your team members have. We can also navigate up to actions and we can come down and make this user a super admin, meaning they have full control over this HubSpot account. 
However, I'm gonna leave that for now and navigate down and click on next. Here you can review the permissions before going ahead and clicking send. And just like that, we've sent an invite to our new team member to access their HubSpot account. Go ahead and click on done. And again, within your account, you can manage all your users here. Next, under Users and Teams, we have Integrations. If we click this drop down, we can go ahead and set up specific integrations. Now, many integrations are only available if you upgrade to a paid plan. However, you can use a free tool like Zapier to integrate your favorite tools with HubSpot. For example, if you're using a different marketing platform like MailChimp for your email marketing activities, then you can use Zapier to connect HubSpot and MailChimp together to seamlessly integrate the data between both platforms. If you're interested in learning how to use Zapier to connect external apps like MailChimp and HubSpot, then what I'll do is add a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description for you to check out. Okay, so what we're going to do is navigate down further and click on Privacy and Consent. Here we want to navigate up to GDPR, and if you collect data from people in the European Union, then you want to comply with the GDPR by navigating over here and clicking Enable, and then Yes, Enable GDPR Tools. Then if we navigate further down next to Data Management, we have Properties, if we click here, this is where you can create and manage all your properties which are used to collect and store information about objects in HubSpot. So an example of this is a contact might have properties like first name or lead status. So you can customize all the different properties the way that you like within your HubSpot account. Again, this is all based on personal preferences and the type of information that you want to collect for specific objects. Okay, so what we're gonna do is navigate back over to data management and come down and click on objects. And this is where we can manage the different objects. So for example, if I click on contacts, we can go ahead and set up contact properties so we can manage all the information you collect about your contacts. Again, this is based on your business's preferences. And then we can choose basic automations down here like assign the company owner to contact by default. And we can also fill contact details from emails with HubSpot AI. We can also navigate up to customize the create contact form, which allows you to choose which information appears in terms of the fields that you can add when creating a new contact. Okay, so what we're gonna do is navigate back over to data management. Again, you wanna take the time to go through all these different objects and customize each of these objects if you like. Then if we navigate down to tools, for example, if we click on inbox and then click on inboxes, and within inboxes, what we can do is go ahead and connect a channel, manage all your conversations in one place by connecting your email, forms, chat, and Facebook Messenger. So again, you can go ahead and connect a channel if you like. And then down here, if your organization uses Slack, go ahead and connect Slack. Then if we navigate back down to tools, we have other basic settings in regards to our tools like marketing. And if I click on forms, we have basic settings in terms of setting up our forms. However, that is everything we wanted to cover in terms of setting up and implementing the HubSpot CRM with your business. Now, if you want to learn more about all the different features that HubSpot has to offer in terms of email marketing activities, setting up meetings, deals, automations, and more, then what I'll do is add a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description that will guide you through how to actually use and navigate through HubSpot. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, what you can also do is create a website for free using HubSpot. Again, I have a complete tutorial which I'll link up above and down below in the description that will guide you through the process of getting started with HubSpot's website so that you can create your own website inside HubSpot. And for those that already have an existing website built with WordPress, then what I'll do is add a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description. Again, that will guide you through the process of using a free plugin to connect HubSpot with your WordPress website, meaning that you can manage all your CRM related activities directly inside your WordPress account. Not only that, but all your website forms and other channels will be connected directly with your HubSpot account. Okay, so I hope this initial HubSpot tutorial helped you set up your HubSpot CRM with your business so that you can start engaging in CRM related activities. And there we have it guys, that is it for this HubSpot implementation tutorial for beginners. Now all the resources we mentioned in this video you'll be able to find in the description below this video. Now if you have any questions, again make sure to pop those down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. If you got value make sure you leave a like and subscribe and that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.